This video covers the general techniques used to collect mosquito larvae and pupae. Depending on the vector species being monitored, there might be slight variations in the techniques described in this video. In general, collections are performed to determine species present in the study area, identify preferred active breeding sites for each species, determine geographical distribution of vectors, assess the cost effectiveness of control interventions, assess the effectiveness of a program in controlling larvae and pupae, collect samples for rearing adults in an insectary. Larval and pupae collections are usually performed by a team of people working closely with the communities, health workers, and laboratory staff involved in the prevention and control of mosquito-borne diseases. Since larvae and pupae collection may take place in a community, it is essential to establish and maintain good relations with households, village leaders, and other members of the community. Priority locations, or entomological surveillance sites, should be established by the National Vector Control Programs, taking into account previously used vector control interventions and available resources. Anopheline mosquitoes breed in many different types of water sources and may require different equipment and techniques. In general, Anopheles prefer clean and unpolluted waters. Anopheles do not breed in swiftly moving streams or rivers since Anopheles larvae are not adapted to withstand wave action. Anopheles darlingi prefer small streams with clean running water and floating vegetation in freshwater rivers and streams. Anopheles albimanus prefer a wide variety of permanent or temporary breeding sites in the sun or shade and of various sizes. Culex larvae can be found primarily in semi-permanent or permanent bodies of water and can breed in polluted water, including septic tanks. Some species, like Culex quinque fasciitis, utilize artificial containers. Aedes species breed exclusively in temporary collections of water, including pools, tanks, rainwater basins, vases, tires, canals, and other artificial, unusable containers in urban or suburban households. Mosquito larvae are usually confined in the margins of a body of water and will not be found in open deep water. Collections should be done around floating debris, aquatic and emergent vegetation, logs and tree stumps in the water, and grasses around the margins. In houses, Look for larvae in all containers or temporary water storage areas. Look for the presence of larvae and pupae before collecting. The collection methods and devices used will depend upon the type and size of breeding places to be investigated. You will need an extendable dipper to collect larvae and pupae from hard to reach places with a 400 milliliter capacity cup. Smaller ladles can be used for collecting larvae from very small breeding places and from tree holes. Pipettes are used to select out larvae from the dipper and transfer to a storage container, but can also be used to collect larvae from the surface of smaller breeding places. Bottles or other forms of large containers are needed to store collected larvae. Typically, one bottle is designated for each breeding site sampled. When searching for mosquito larvae, it is necessary to proceed slowly and carefully. Approach the area to be inspected with caution to avoid disturbances that will cause the larvae to dive to the bottom. Approach the area to be sampled with the sun in one's face. This prevents shadows that also disturb larvae and cause them to dive. Larvae and pupae may be found at the surface of the water among aquatic vegetation or floating debris. Therefore, larvae and pupae can be collected with a shallow skimming stroke just below the surface.
Surface water will flow into the cavity, but care should be taken not to fill this completely as some larvae will be washed out. If the larvae are disturbed, wait a minute or two for them to resurface. The number of dips in each breeding place and the species of larvae found should be noted in order to calculate larval densities, which is the number of third or fourth instars collected in a specified number of dips. Larvae and pupae may be transferred with a pipette to a bottle or vial. Be sure to separate larvae from non-mosquito larvae. Do not discard the water back into the breeding site. Since additional tests may be conducted at a laboratory, larvae and pupae should arrive alive and undamaged. Larvae should be transported in a container with water from the breeding site. Make sure an appropriate amount of air is at the top of the collection bottles so that larvae and pupae can breathe for a few hours. If the journey to the laboratory takes more than two to three hours, remove the lids of containers every two hours to provide the specimens with fresh air. Avoid direct sunlight and excessive shaking. Pack bottles carefully so that they are not jolted during transportation to the lab. Periodic sampling might be necessary to monitor mosquito densities, so a GPS unit or a sketch map showing the position of the breeding sites relative to villages and settlements may be helpful. Each sampled breeding place should have a unique number recorded in a notebook. Against this number, record the location, type of breeding place, number of dips made, and date. You have now seen an overview of the general techniques used to capture mosquito larvae and pupae. As with any methodology, practice is needed to improve technique and develop a reliable collection methodology. For more information on integrated vector management or training materials, please visit our website.